Good morning, Galley family and friends. I'm Amy, and I am here with your Friday prayer focus this week. I have to admit, I am so glad that the election is over. I am ready for new topics of conversation, but I also have to admit that I thought it was quite fitting that for this first weekend coming out of an election week, Psalm 146 is in our lectionary readings. And um, I want to jump into that today as our Friday prayer focus. You see, Psalm 146 is the first of the last five psalms of the Psalter, and they are known as the Hallelujah Psalms. The word Hallelujah combines two Hebrew words, Hallel, which means to praise, and Yah, which is the shortened or condensed form of Yahweh, the personal name of God. So in English, hallelujah would simply translate to praise the Lord. And you find praise the Lord at the beginning and end of each of these psalms, each of these last five psalms in the Psalter. And that's why they're called the hallelujah psalms. Now, the short form of Yah is found in hallelujah. But we also see the full name of the Lord, Yahweh, translated Lord used nine times within the 10 verses of this short psalm. Yahweh is called out over and over again. Now, why does that matter? You see, God has many names that highlight his various attributes. When we speak of God as creator and powerful, high and above, we use the name Elohim. When we see him providing, we might call on the name Jireh. The name Yahweh, that is his personal name, and that refers to, when we use that, we are referring to the person and character of the Lord. Yahweh is the Lord who reveals himself to us. In Exodus 3, he revealed himself to Moses in the burning bush. He was a God that drew near in order to redeem Israel and rescue them out of Egypt. As we hear the psalmist call for us to praise the Lord, know that they are not, this psalmist is not calling us to praise some far off, distant, high above everything God. They are calling us to praise the God that comes to us to save us and redeem us. Now, depending on who you wanted to win the election, you may find yourself full of celebration or full of despair over what you think the next four years might look like. But the reality is, and this is where Psalm 146 meets us in terms of the election week. Regardless of who won as Christians, our response should always be the same. We pray for the one who was elected into office to serve our country. And we praise and put our hope and trust in the one who holds the entire world in his hands. Now, this psalm also applies well beyond the election season. We live in a culture that is fascinated by people, by the greats. We elevate and lift up and quote royal families and celebrity pastors and sports heroes and music icons and movie stars and also social media influencers, people we don't know, but they've got a camera and some time on their hands and they make content and we put them up on pedestals too and then we spend and give hours of our time each week looking at their content that they produce. So much in our culture begs and calls for us to give attention to it, to worship it and idolize it and lift it up. But at the end of the day, we look at what Psalm 146 says in verse three, where it reminds us, put not your trust in princes, in a son of man in whom there is no salvation. When his breath departs, he will return to the earth. And on that very day, his plans perish. You see, this psalm is reminding us that even though the pull of our culture and our day is, is one that would cause us to elevate people and put them on pedestals and worship and idolize them, we have to remember that they are still merely human. They can do nothing to provide for the need that each of us has, that eternal need for salvation. The only one that does that is Christ. But also reminding ourselves that they are simply people. They put on their pants one leg at a time, just like the rest of us. They are limited in what they can do. And even though they might be given a season of power and influence or authority, 
they are just like the rest of us. These sons and daughters of Adam, they come from the earth and to the earth they return when they die, along with their plans and their promises. But Yahweh, Yahweh is next level. And the psalmist quickly turns our eyes and over the next five verses, we are given all of the actions done by the Lord that make him alone praiseworthy. He is the one that makes and creates. He executes and guards and gives and the list continues. In verses seven, eight, and nine specifically, we really start to see Christ coming into focus. Now, as I read these verses, note how many times you hear the term Lord as I read. Who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food for the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. He upholds the widow and the fatherless but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. Read through those verses a few times and you might start hearing Isaiah 61 echoing alongside of them. Isaiah 61 were the scriptures that Jesus read in the synagogue very early in his career when he went in and grabbed the scroll and the words go something like, the spirit of the Lord is on me and he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor and proclaim freedom for the captives. It's also what Jesus claimed to be fulfilled, the prophecy he claimed to fulfill that very day. I think it's interesting because as I read through this psalm and those three verses, I see so very clearly how Jesus fulfills each and every one of these descriptions perfectly. Jesus quite literally gave food to the hungry. He lifted up those that were bowed down. He opened the eyes of the blind and he set the captives free. Now I do believe that scripture points us to Christ from beginning to end. But I also think that it's no coincidence to see Christ so clearly in a Psalm that is commanding us to praise Yahweh. You see, God knows our futility and how quickly we will praise him only to turn and to set our eyes on some other fabricated object or person and begin to worship them instead. God knows that we need the frequent reminder that the Lord is not far off or out of reach, that not only did he create all things, but he is a personal God that comes to us. He came to Moses in a bush to redeem the people of Israel and he comes in the man or the person of Jesus in order that we would be redeemed. With Yahweh being repeated, Yahweh being Lord, being repeated five times between these few verses, it's easy to see that not only are we being pointed to Christ, I think that here we are being told that Jesus is Yahweh. He is the only one worthy of praise. So with that in mind, our prayer focus with this psalm this week is really twofold. Of course, we are going to praise the Lord as the psalmist commands us. We are going to praise the Lord, our risen Lord. And also we are going to ask just as Jesus himself taught us, we ask that his kingdom come and his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Knowing that God sent Jesus into the world to deliver us from sin, death, and the devil, we see a glimpse of his kingdom here in this psalm. You see, in his kingdom, the marginalized are cared for, the prisoners are free, the blind will see, and so much more. So we ask for that kingdom to come for us today, as well as for those who have yet to believe. We ask this for as long as the psalmist says that they are gonna praise the Lord, which back in verse two, I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. For as long as I live and as I have my being, that is literally every day that you are on this earth, you are praising the Lord. Every single day we can praise Jesus. Every single day we pray and ask that his will be done, that his kingdom would come here on earth as it is in heaven. And we do that for all of our days as we await what Paul describes in Philippians 2, 10 through 11. That at that name of Jesus, every knee would bow in heaven and on earth 
and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So I hope that you will join me in praising Jesus, our Lord, our risen Lord, and also praying and asking that the Lord's kingdom would come and his will would be done on earth as it is in heaven, and that we would remember that we pray that as Jesus taught us to pray. We pray that as prayers that Jesus prayed himself. And we pray that knowing that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Yahweh. He was God who came to us to redeem us and to save us, that we might know him and be known by him. I hope that you guys have an incredible week and weekend. And I thank you for letting me be part of your Friday prayer focus this week. I will see you next time.